Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. In this video, I will show you how to make a double needle Coptic stitch book binding. This differs from a usual Coptic stitch by using two needles, one on each end of your thread, and alternating them while you bind, which can form a more uniform braided look to your stitches. You can also bind with two colors of thread on this one, and instead of binding across the entire signature, you're stitching in sections of two. You can find links to all of the supplies I use in the description below, and if you want to skip ahead to just the binding portion, I included timestamps down there, or if you want to watch the cover setup and how I set up all my pages, keep on watching. In this video, I made two different sized books. For the smaller one, I divided a 9 by 12 inch paper into four sheets. I stacked four of these evenly together and folded the group in half to make one signature. So my page size ended up being four and a half by three inches, and I did this eight more times to make eight signatures total. And I cut two board pieces to the same size for the front and back cover. For the larger book, I cut 9 by 12 inch paper in half, and gathering four of these divided sheets together so I can fold them in half to make a signature. So if you didn't know what a signature is, it's basically this. You can use two sheets, three sheets if you want, I like to use four, as long as they are folded and stacked one on top of the other. I repeated this to make seven signatures total and my page size was four and a half by six inches. I cut two boards to that same size to make the front and back cover. For the cover material, I'm using my raspberry pattern wrapping paper, which you can find for sale in my Society6 shop. I like the printed grid on the back, which makes it easy to cut around projects. And I glued this on all covers using an extra strength glue stick. And I'll use a bone folder or a brayer, which is what I'm using here, to smooth out any air bubbles. To wrap the covers, I leave about an inch or less of a border around the board and cut the corners at an angle like this, leaving a little bit of paper left on the tip of the board. Then I glue those flaps over and use a bone folder to smooth out any air bubbles. I crease down that extra piece that I left on the corner so that when I glue the next flap over, it will fold evenly over that corner piece and no board will be exposed. For the inside covers, I cut out a piece of cardstock, and I usually make this about an inch less than the cover size, and then glue it centered on the board. I did this step for all the covers. Now on to the process of making all the binding holes. For the smaller book, I made two holes that are one and a half inch apart. And for the larger book, I made four holes that were also one and a half inch apart. And the space between the binding holes is totally up to your preference, you can do any layout you want. To make the holes, I'm using this binding guide, which I did review in a past video, you can check it out up here or down below. And you can also use an awl or a thumbtack, I just sometimes like to use this because it makes the process go a little bit faster. I circled the holes that I wanted to punch with pink highlighter and then I can just wipe it off, so that way it's easier to know where I'm punching. And I did this to every signature for both books. Now I'm going to use one of the signatures as a template and make the holes for the covers. Starting with the smaller book, I made marks 3 8 of an inch away from the edge, and this time I'm going to use a screw punch to make the holes in the board. This will give a cleaner cut, but you can also do this with an awl or a thumbtack. Just make sure that it's large enough to sew through. And now on to the larger book. I did the same process, marking where the holes will go 3 8 of an inch away from the edge, and using the screw punch. Now that all the pages and covers are ready, we can move on to the binding. I'm going to start with the smaller book first. I think just two holes is the easiest way to first learn this method. You could use one color of thread on this one, but I will show you how to bind with two, so you see what that looks like, and you will need two binding needles. I have curved ones, but you can also use straight. You can estimate how much thread you need by running it along your book edge for as many times as you have signatures. I prefer the thread to be more grippy, so I run it through some beeswax. This part is optional, and it's really up to your preference. With both color threads cut to the same length, I'm going to make a square knot on the ends. Now 
and thread each end with a binding needle. Start out with one signature and go through both holes with one binding needle so each one has its own side and you're going to pull both threads all the way through until the knot is on the fold on the inside. Then to attach one cover, go through the hole on the coordinating side and pull the needle through so it's going between the signature and the cover. Do this on the other thread, then loop the needle behind like this and return it into a new signature. And repeat that with the other needle as well. Now on the inside of the signature, you're going to switch places. So the right needle is going to come out the left side and the left needle is going to come out the right side. Now you're going to loop the needle behind between the cover and that previous signature, leaving a loop of thread to go through and pull up like you're making a knot. This is what gives it that braided textured look, but make sure not to pull it too tight because then you won't see it as much. Repeat that on the other thread, making sure you looped in the same direction, and return the needles back into a new signature. And just like before, you're going to switch the threads. The right goes into the left, and the left goes into the right. Then on the outside, make sure to remember to go two signatures down and loop behind, leaving a loop of thread to go to to make a knot. And to keep the binding consistent, you want to make sure the stitching is always going in the same direction. So I always remember to leave the loop open on the right side and pull the needle through to the right. And same thing on the other end. After repeating this on all of the signatures, you will see that stitching pattern form alternating in color if you use two different threads. And when you reach the last signature, go through the other cover like this, pulling the thread in the same direction on both sides, looping the needle behind, and return the needle back into that previous signature, pulling it all the way through to the inside and repeating that on the other side as well. Then to finish, tie them off in a knot on the inside and trim off the excess. And there you have a double needle Coptic stitch with two colors of thread. I think just two holes works well for smaller books like this. And just like a usual Coptic stitch, you get the benefit of your book laying flat. Now that you got the basics of this method, you can repeat this to make a combination of pairs on a larger book. To show you what that looks like, here I'm going to use four needles and repeat basically what I showed you twice on the same book. But this time I will use just one color of thread. I prepared the thread in the same way as the last book, adding a binding needle to each end of the thread. Starting with one signature, pulling the thread all the way through, and making sure the thread has an even amount on both sides and binding the next double section right next to it at the same time. If you're doing multiples like this, I find it helpful to use a table where you have enough room to let the thread hang down. That way they don't get all mixed up and it's easier to organize them. And making sure all the threads are being stitched in the same direction. And the process is basically the same as I showed you before. You're going to alternate the needles on the inside so they cross each other and then you're going to stitch that knot on the outside of the book. Always going down two signatures to loop behind. And here's the final result, showing you what two sections of a double needle Coptic stitch looks like in one book. After making these, I have a couple of tips to share with you. 
You may notice the last signature you stitch on has four lines of thread in the middle, and it can make the signature a little bit bulky. I'm not sure how to get around that, so I like to leave that signature on the bottom of the book, so the weight of the book kind of presses down that bulky signature. Also, it's totally normal for a Coptic stitch to be a little loose. It doesn't mean the book is any less strong, it's what gives it the ability to open all the way flat when you lay it on a tabletop. If this really does bother you, and to some people it does, you can add a layer of clear glue to the spine, here's an example, and this prevents it from shifting around. Just keep in mind if you do this, your pages might not open completely flat. While researching how to figure out this binding method, I did find a couple of helpful videos on YouTube. I will link those down below. So this is my own take, and with all book binding, there's always a variation that you can try. You could even combine this with another stitch to form a unique combo of stitches on your book spine. If there are other binding methods you would like to see on this channel, leave a comment below. And a big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for helping me make more videos like this. If you would like to help support more content on my channel, go check out the links below. There are membership tiers and Patreon tiers that you can check out. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell right next to it so you get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to jump into more binding methods, I have a playlist right here. And if you want to jump into just book projects that you can apply those binding methods to, I have a separate playlist right here. Links will be all down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!